أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أدعوه إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن دل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين صدق الله مولانا العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي يا حسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن دل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمتدين صدق الله مولانا العظيم عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتكين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أحمدك ربي وأستعينك وأثني عليك وأتوكل عليك وأستكفرك وأتوب إليك وأستهديك وأسترشدك وأستليمك وأستزيدك فأنت حسبي وأنت سندي وأنت إمادي وأنت أولي وأنت آخري وأنت ظاهري وأنت باطني وأنت لي نعم المولى ونعم النصير وأستكفر الله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يدلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله واحد إله أحد إله موحد إله وحيد إله فرد إله مفرد إله متفرد إله منفرد إله فريد إله حي إله قيوم إله عبدي إله داري إله ديمومي إله سرمدي إله وفر إله صمد إله لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد إله هو الأول فلا شيء قبله وهو الآخر فلا شيء بعده وهو الظاهر فلا شيء فوقه وهو الباطن فلا شيء دونه إله قادر إله قدير إله مقتدر إله هو أقدر القادرين إله قاهر إله قهار إله لا يقهر إله هو أقهر القاهرين إله عالم إله علام الغيوب إله عليم بذات الصدور إله هو أعلم العالمين حي قبل كل حي حي بعد كل حي حي بعد كل ميت حي يبعث كل ميت حي يغي كل حي حي يميت كل ميت حي يبعث كل ميت حي لن يموت أبدا كل من عليها فان ويبكى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا ووسيلتنا إلى ربنا وغاية ربتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحابته ومن نهج نهجهم وسلك مسلكهم واهتدى بهديهم واستنى بسنتهم واستمسك بعروتهم واسترشد برشدهم ودعا بدعوتهم وعمل بعملهم 
وحتنا بهماهم وتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في موكم تنزيله في سورة فصلت بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تهزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تدعو أنفسنا تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم ومن أعسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني مسلمين ولا تستوي بتاع لوغان ولا تستوي لحسنة ولا سيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم وفي آية أخرى يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة وعيد والموعزة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن إن ربك بتدش عليهم هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم به بالموجري سلك الله العظيم I seek refuge in the Almighty Allah against Shaitan the Accursed and I want to start today's sermon as usual in the name of the Almighty Allah the most gracious the most praise be to the Almighty Allah praise be to the Almighty Allah praise be to the Almighty Allah we thank the Almighty Allah I want us to stop there because we have a lot to talk about. You will all have observed that last Sunday, which was the 25th of December, 2011, it was a Christmas day. Christians in their millions had prepared for a merry Christmas. But the Christmas was not merry. In many parts of the country, it wasn't a Merry Christmas. Unknown to the Christians, and unknown to many of us here, some heartless, heartless, that is the word, people that have no heart, people that have no faith, people that have no conscience, they can never be Muslims. Those people that committed these crimes can never be Muslims. Does Islam teach, teach that what they did? In Madala, in Yubi, in Naduguri, in Jos. Are they are these the teachings of Islam? That is not Islam. It can never be Islam. I have said it in different fora that if that if that were Islam, I would have been the first person to withdraw. But we thank Allah that we understand what Islam is. We thank Allah that we are well educated about what is Islam and what is not Islam. If that we are to be Islam, we will have withdrawn. All of us, we will have withdrawn. But that is not Islam. We thank God for that. That is not Islam. These heartless, faithless, and people without conscience, elements of the society, so-called Boko Haramists, they attack innocent Christian celebrants. In the town of Madala, very close to Abuja, they didn't stop there. They also struck, they struck at Jaws, Yobe, and Suleja. The purpose of this khutbah, from this khutbah, we want to achieve five things. I want you to pay attention. This khutbah is supposed to be very, very tough to educate those of us who are ignorant about Islam. We are misrepresenting Islam. What happened in Yubi, in Madala, in Jos, in all these towns is not Islam. 
Don't let it enter into your head that that is Islam. What they are doing there is not representative of Islam. And those who did it can never be Muslims. And this khutbah, we want to condemn. It is a khutbah of condemnation. We are here to condemn these barbaric acts. They are barbaric because they are against the tenet of Islam. This is not for you. Don't smile there. It's not a funny thing. For people to be killing each other, where are we going to put all the teachings of Islam? Where are you going to hide that of the teachings of Islam? Wamana ahaya ha faka annama ahaya nasa jami'an. As we condemn, we also have the responsibility to sympathize. To sympathize with whom? To sympathize with the relatives of those who were killed without innocence. These, these were innocent people in a place of worship. We want to also pray for the victims. Then we want to educate one another. What is Islam? Is that Islam? Is that what we stand for? Are we pleased? Are we satisfied? Are we happy? Anybody that is happy with what happened in those towns on Christmas Day is not a Muslim. We need to understand our religion. Finally, we want to talk to the government itself. We want to advise the government. What is the government doing? What is the essence of the government? And we want to alert the information unit of this university that they should reflect this khutbah. This is the stand of the Muslim community. The Muslim community of this university is against all the atrocities committed in all those towns. In Mandala, in order for you to, to, to appreciate what happened there and to know that you are not here today to smile or to laugh or to joke or to amuse one another, just look at this. In Mandala, more than 25 people were killed instantly as a result of the bomb blast on a Christmas day. A day that our religion respects. Our religion is not against any other religion. Leave them alone. It isn't the intention of the Almighty Allah that everybody should be a Muslim. It isn't the intention of Allah. When I say Arab Buka, let the Allah Nasa, Ummah and Wahida, if it had been the decision of the Almighty Allah, the desire of the Almighty Allah, He will have forced everybody to be a Muslim. But that is not. That isn't the grand plan of the Almighty Allah. The grand plan of the Almighty Allah is that there will be Muslims. That is the word of Allah, it's not my word. Throughout eternity, they shall be Christians. Throughout eternity, they shall be Muslims. Throughout eternity, they shall be Jews. Throughout eternity, there shall be people who do not believe in Islam, who do not believe in Christianity, in Judaism, in anything, who do not believe in the existence of the Almighty Allah. So what are we talking about? We don't have to force anybody into any religion. Clear. Clearly stated, abundantly stated in the Quran. There should be no force. Religion is a matter of, of the heart. It's a matter of conviction. If you are not convinced, leave them alone. And on a Christmas day, and in a sanctuary, a church like a mosque, has a sanctity. It's a sacred place. People pray there and God has said their prayers. How often do we see them? Do we see them saying, Wilson, Wilson, and allow Wilson? I'm not joking. I'm just drawing your attention to the fact that God is for everybody. He is going to deal with all of us on the day of resurrection. He's not here. Otherwise, uh, 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 there is this hadith, If this world, this universe, this life of ours, is what the wind of the mosquito, if it was the wing of a mosquito, the Almighty Allah will never allow, will have never allowed a castle to get a drop of water. But because it is worthless, it is a worthless place. It is a place where our faith, our own faith, is exposed to trial. Allah is trying us. For the Alma Bada, the Bada, the Sitna, the Atas Biru. 
The Almighty Allah says, we have put all of you on trial. The Christian is a trial for you as a Muslim. A Muslim is a trial for a, non, a non-Muslim. And like that. Allah is testing the level of our, the level, the degree of our faith by all these different denominations. Now for anybody to have thought of killing another person on their day of celebration, Christmas Day, it is against all the principles and practices of Islam. Say Allah Akbar. Say Allah Akbar. I'm calling on the information unit of the university to take note of what we are saying today. We had a khutbah here on secret societies, cultism, for three consecutive weeks. We were talking about cultism, and they never thought of saying something about it. But we have a, an information unit. They should take note of this one. In Mandala, on a Christmas day, more than 25 people were killed instantly as a result of a bomb blast planted, allegedly, by the so-called Boko Haramists. And, and, and by the way, we should recall that any place of worship, whether it is a synagogue, what is a synagogue? A place where Jews worship their God. A church where Christians worship their God. A, a, a mosque where Muslims meet. Any place of worship in Islam is a sacred place. You don't tamper with worshippers there. Even when you are in war, at war, in Islam, Islam is so beautiful that even when you are at war, you don't tamper with their worship places, places of worship. You don't tamper with them. You don't tamper with women. You don't tamper with the young ones. These are the beautiful teachings of Islam. These have been distorted. These have been bastardized by the so-called Boko Haramis. They are not Muslims. Anybody that do what they did that day, anybody that does that, cannot claim to be a Muslim. It's a violation of the principles and values of Islam. Now, more than 25 killed instantly. 13 cars, 13 of them, were reduced to ashes instantly. Nine apartments were shattered by explosions at the frontage of St. Teresa's Catholic Church in Mandala, in front of the church. How can somebody that calls himself a Muslim go close to a church and plant a bomb? We have to make inferences. These people, are try- they, they have hidden agenda. They are trying to cause confusion, to cause confrontation, to cause war among the Muslims and the Christians. And we have to be vigilant. We need to be vigilant. Islam doesn't teach all those, all those rubbish that they are doing. Three different families, three different families we are born to death in their respective vehicles. Three different families. One is family of five, another one is family of four, another one is family of three. Put yourself in their place on Ilya Day, Idil Fitra or Idil Ada. Go to the eight ground and people are planting bombs for you. How will you feel? We are not safe. If they were to retaliate, you will, you will lose your imam. Any moment from now you can lose your imam if they were to retaliate, to, to reduce themselves to that level. And how many of us do we know that is likely to lose to his life? Four Okada, Okada motorcyclists were killed with their, bus, their, their bikes reduced to heaps of crushed metal. Just put yourself in their shoes. And the prophet is saying that now you mean I had to come, hatta, you hibbole ahi, ma you hibbole nafsi. You can never be a perfect Muslim or a Mormon until you love for others what you love for yourself. How on earth can you imagine a human being? Are these human beings? They are beasts. They are even worse. Balum abalmu. They are worse than, than, than beasts. We hereby condemn. We hereby condemn this act in its totality. All that happened in Madala, in Job, in Yobi, we condemn the act in its totality. We condemn because it is cowardly. It is cowardly. It is callous. It is barbaric. It is brutal. It is against all the principles and practices of Islam. Innocent people. People in their churches. 
in their places of worship. They were harmless. They, they couldn't have done any harm. They were not carrying guns. They were not carrying arms. They were harmless. They were harmless. They cannot harm. They were innocent. They were not guilty of any offense. And you planning to kill them on the day of their celebration. A church, as I said, is a sanctuary. Like a mosque, it is a safe haven. Somewhere you, you, you can run to in search of refuge. In time of war, once you are in the mosque, you are safe. You are in the church, you are safe. In the synagogue, you are in the synagogue, you are safe. And now you have converted a safe haven to a hell. It contradicts the teachings of Islam. Is it not our Islam that says, La testa wala hasanatu wala sayi'a? You can never equate a good deed with evil. An evil and a good deed, they are not, are they equal? They are not equal. It is the that you hear after. The Quran is saying, even if somebody is guilty, he has offended you. Quran is saying, with the far be lucky here as an. Do not offend him. Do better than him. Repel his evil with something better than what he has done. I am emotional. Am I, am I communicating? I don't want my emotion to bar what I want to be, the message I want to convey. Somebody has done you wrong. Don't do wrong against him. I'm quoting from Surah Al-Fusilat. Somebody has done you wrong. Don't do wrong. Repair the wrong deed he has done with something that is better than his own act. And look at, look at the tail end of the, of the verse. When you read the Bainaka, wa Bainahu Adawa, Ka'anahu Waliyun Hanim. If it so happens that the person that has offended you is an enemy, an avowed enemy, an enemy that is known by anybody, known to anybody that this is an avowed enemy, what do you do? Ka'anahu, behave to him. Ka'anahu waliyun hame. You behave to him as if he is an intimate friend. Go look at your Allah Akbar. Is it not the Quran that is telling? Look at the teachings of Islam. Ka'anahu. When you want to react, react. Not as if you are reacting to an enemy, but as if you are reacting to an intimate waliyun hanimu or kuriusu. That is what should be. That, 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 is an, that is a reaction that is representative, symbolic. And everything of Islam, that is it. وَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا Look at the Almighty Allah that knows us better than us, than ourselves. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَى الَّذِينَ صَلَهُ This resume, recipe, this teaching that the Almighty Allah has given us, at the end Allah says, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَى الَّذِينَ صَلَهُ Nobody can do it other than those who exercise patience. It is only the patient ones that can afford to behave to an avowed enemy as if that enemy is an intimate friend. Nobody can do it other than those for whom the Almighty Allah has a portion, a portion of a fortune, a fortune that is avi that you can never imagine. Can we say Allah Akbar? Can we say Allah Akbar? Can we say Allah Akbar? So, having condemned the act, we also have the death of praying for the victims, these innocent people. You see, it's sympathetic that people are harmless. They cannot do any harm. It is the day of their festival. According to them, the day they were celebrating the birth of Christ, whether that is correct or right, it is not our business. Whether that is actually the date of birth of Christ, it is not relevant. Leave them alone. They believe that is Christmas Day. Leave them to celebrate their Christmas. Look at our own contradiction. A time there was when we, have, when we were celebrating, a group of people in Nigeria were celebrating Eid al when Arafah was on, on the day of Arafah. 
we have a lot of contradiction in our, in our, in our, in our own religion, but that is not the issue. The issue is that Lakundi Mokomu Waliye Kaluku Fomutie Kaluku Bajuko Koko Koko Bajuman Zimbansi Kusin Tokawa Kalun Zenu Mimbansi We pray for the victims. May their gentle souls rest in perfect peace. We remember the surviving relatives. Look at the many families. This even up to this morning, if you listen to the 7 o'clock network news, people are still searching. Parents are still, some parents are still searching for their children. What kind of country is this country? I think there is a cause. What kind of, this, this country is supposed to be a world power. We have all the world with us. All the resources that are required to be a well power we have. But look at us. We are making a, a, a hell of a paradise. We are making a hell of a paradise. We remember the surviving relatives. May the Almighty Allah give them the patience, the fortitude to bear the loss. It's a, it's a, it's a loss. When you have a family of five and you, they, they, you have four children, they are all gone. How do you live for the rest of your life? Is that not the mother of all trials? Family of four, family of three, family of five. Born. How do you live for the rest of your life? When you say, call of you that busy. But then you should know. You have that you will. It's only God that can strengthen them. May the Almighty Allah strengthen them. And we need to educate ourselves. We have gotten to the point at which we have to educate ourselves. Those of you that are thinking of uh, becoming a suicide bomber, I will be lie. Have you, haven't you come across the, the teaching of the Prophet that man sarada, man sallallahu alaihi wasallam, man sarada min jabalin fakatala nafsahu, fawa fi jahannama yatarada fi ha halidan muhalladan abada. Whoever, so probably at least, whoever climbs a mountain and in the process jumped in order to commit suicide and in the process kills himself, you climb a mountain, Sobi or Oluma, and you jump so that you kill yourself. In the process, you succeeded, you commit suicide. You think you've solved the problem? The prophet says, Fawua, Fija, Nama, Yatarada, Fiha, Holidan, Muhallada. By the time you wake up to the next to the next world, what you find is that you will see the process of climbing the mountain. You will continue climbing the mountain, jumping and undergoing all the pounds and play, play, agony of his suicide. And you remain suffering like that to the day of resurrection. The Allah has died weak. The Allah has died weak. The Allah has died weak. Waman, I'm not smiling, no, he's not a joker. Waman that's why every day we, we, we meet on this member, I advise you that go and study Arabic and Islamic studies. Imanullah Dini, Ogmona, Ogmona, you will be a work of the king. You are the way Amadi did that, or Ankai, you are the way that Maman Taki, Maman Tarada, while I did, that you, that you. We used to have a sheikh from Aziari, a sheikh from Aziari, a sheikh that when he speaks, what kind of khutbah? If he, if he gives a khutbah, the Yoruba will say that he was a He didn't have a beard. And I went to him one day, I said, ah, Ya Sheikh, why are you not bearded? A simple answer, I haven't forgotten since then. He said, Ya Abdul Ghani, Le Lehiyati, Hukuk. Le Lehiyati, Hukuk. What are you talking about? Le Lehiyati, Hukuk. Inhule. 